Welcome everyone. In this video, we will be learning about some Kotlin keywords that are inline, no inline, cross inline, and reified keyword. Here I have created a sample function that is save all data, which contains number of string values. And inside that function, I am simply running a loop to save all values one by one. And here is another function that checks the validity of every item. And if you check this function, so it takes two parameters. One is the item to check the validity and second is a higher order function, which is a lambda function, which will be called if that particular item is valid. You can here see this simple implementation and when any item is valid, then I am calling this save item function, which just print this item saved. So if I am running this function, it just says the first item is valid, then it is saved and then I am calling saved successful. And for invalid item, it is just calling one line that item is invalid and same for another item valid, saved and success called. So let's see the use of our keywords in this example. So first is our inline keyword and remember all the keywords that we are learning today should be only used with any higher ordered function because then only you will get benefited from using these keywords. If you are using these inline keywords for just normal functions, like if you are using inline here, then uh, it will be not effective and it will be unnecessary increase in your bytecode. I will tell you how. You can also see the warning here. So let me remove. So what is the use of this inline keyword here? It uh, haven't changed anything here, right? Let me remove this and let me show you the Kotlin bytecode and decompile. And inside this check validity function, two parameters are passed just like our Kotlin file. One is our item and second is this function. So it is a new function that uh, we haven't created yet. And this function returns us a unit value and it is calling save function inside of it. So this block, this function is created as a separate function inside of our compiled code. Suppose I am adding a print line here. And I am passing some value, 1, 2, 3, for example. If I am decompiling, then you will not see any change here. So, this check validity function is still taking these two same parameters, but this function will now have this 1, 2, 3 line. And first, this variable is printing, and then we are calling this save. And that means one extra function is getting created for our compiled code. So what is the problem with this thing? So if you know whenever we are creating any objects, so that simply means whenever we are using any lambda function and our decompiled code will have that function separately and will be treated as a function object of Java. And if you already know in JVM, if a new object is created, that will be allocated memory in heap and allocating room for that object in our heap memory is quite unnecessary and an expensive operation. It will not affect your performance if there are one or two functions, but if you are running a loop and there are multiple our entries are present, then, uh, then this will create a lot of functions being allocated room in our heap memory. So what is the solution here to not create that separate function for this lambda block? And the answer is inline keyword. So whenever you are using an inline keyword, so the whole implementation of that function will be copied to the actual call of that function. So that means wherever in your code you are calling this check validity function. So what your compiler will do, it will copy the whole implementation and it will just paste it out here like this. And instead of this lambda block, it will just call whatever you are you were calling it previously. You want a proof? Let me revert it. Now this function is inline. Let me decompile again. Here you can see inside of our save all data function, we are running through the loop and here you can see the condition is present inside here and there is no extra function that is being created. So we are checking here the condition and uh, we, are, we are calling the save function itself in this save all data function, which is not here in this case. Yes, there is this drawback that uh, it actually increased the bytecode size of our decompiled code, but that trade-off is worth it if you are getting a performance boost here. But then there is one more concept that arises here. So this is a lambda function, right? And suppose for an instance, I'm not using inline. So what if I'm returning from here? If I'm using the return keyword here, what will happen? If you ever try doing this, what will happen with this return keyword? Will it return from this function? Because this lambda is also a function, right? And any function can return. Will this keyword return from this function? Or will this keyword return from this check validity function? That means from its call side means from here this return these two things will be copied here or what will happen will this return return from this parent function that is save all data so where this return will be applied 
right now it is not possible to directly return here because if we are returning that means it is expecting this return for this save all data and that is not possible for non inline functions if you have to write return then you have to use at the rate check visibility that means this check visibility function will get return and if we are running our code with this you can see still the exact same response is there because when we are returning we are returning after everything is getting saved and this thing will also get called suppose i have to write some conditions here if suppose suppose this item is uh, starting with x then i am returning so what will happen that means we will call this lambda so this x is valid is called but that will not be saved this this lambda block will just return it will not call this save function and after that this will be also called let us try this thing okay for x we are falling into this condition so let me use s if we are running so sagar is valid and sagar valid response success called so that means this function is also getting called but this is returning so that means this lambda block is actually returning with this function with writing this line so i hope you got some clarity we just not called this save function for sagar value and this is called this line is also called and this last line is also called and rest of the response is pretty similar but what if in any scenario you want to return from this save old data function suppose i am expecting x is a corrupted data and once i am facing any corrupted data then i have to return from this save old data and this return will be called as a non local return a local return is when i am returning from this lambda block and a non local return is when i am calling from another context and i want to return from my parent function so this return will be considered as our non local return so this non local return is not possible from any other context which is this on valid success function and will be possible if we are using inline and that is also pretty obvious because we are just copying this thing we are pasting it here instead of this check validity function and inside this we are just checking this condition so we can obviously return any time this will be no more considered as a separate context if we are using this inline keyword so what will happen first we will check sagar sagar is valid we will save it and after this when we face x so we will directly return from this save all data and uh, next two values will be also not get saved okay the response here is same because we are using this condition this function is never called let me write a and let me move this to the front so so sagar will be saved and if we face android then this will fall into this condition and on valid success is called but this is a for example corrupted data so we will return from saving any value so sagar will be saved and android is valid because this line is called but then we are returning from saving any value so this is so this is a non local return for inline keyword so i hope this concept of non local return is clear to you and i have one more thing to explain here that is now since we are using this inline keyword so this value this function will be also inline at wherever the call site is and that also means whatever we are calling with this lambda suppose we are using this two lines for this on valid success response that means this function will be now inline and these two lines will be no more created as a group and that means we cannot access this on valid success as a variable because now this function is not treated as a group and also if we are having any other function which is taking a lambda and as i said now this function will be not considered as a group or we can say this will be not considered as a function object so we cannot reference it and we cannot pass it to any other function which is non inline and which expects a lambda so if i am passing on valid so that will be not valid because this is actually not a group right either this other function should be also inline or this should be no inline so i hope now you understood what is the use of this no inline this is used when you are having multiple lambda calls suppose there are two lambda functions and i want one to be inline and other to be not inline so i can first use this inline keyword to completely inline the whole function and i can pass this extra thing this no inline for a specific lambda function that i don't want to inline so so i can do this 
and now if you decompile again here you can see a function object is getting created with this thing rest of this check validity function is getting inline because we are using this inline keyword here you can you can see these conditions are here but uh, then this on valid success function is just created as a separate function object so that is where our performance impact will be so this is our no inline keyword and now we also have another function that is cross inline and uh, let me remove this inline keyword here so this cross inline function will be used when we have to call this function this lambda from any other context not in any other function so so this thing is uh, still invalid for our cross inline because for this cross inline function still this function will be inlined here that means own valid success function will be called here the actual purpose of using cross inline is if you are calling this own valid success from any context like this is another context suppose i am writing where x equal to this so this is another function context so this thing will be only possible if i am using here cross inline and if i am not then this thing will give us an error because if any function is getting inline then that lambda function will not be accessible from any other context suppose i am creating here a thread so that thread is considered as a, another context and uh, that will be only accessed if i am using this cross inline so cross inline simply means that this function can cross between multiple contexts inside of this inside of this function itself and uh, that also means we cannot use here non local returns also same in the case of no inline no inline is pretty simple this function will not get inline and uh, that is obvious that this will this will work as a normal function and uh, then no local return will be not here so our last and final keyword is reified keyword and i have written a very simple example to explain what is reified so here i have written a generic function which takes a type t and a parameter is class of that type t and what i am printing is t colon colon class dot java but if you see this thing is not compiling and that is because if you are using any generic function so so this generic type is only available to you at the compile time and will be erased at runtime so this thing will not get compiled and you have to hard code that means you have to write specific class if you want to compile this code but kotlin provide us reified keyword so you can only use this reified keyword with inline keyword because then this function will get inline and will get the type of this t class that we are passing and now we can access any field or anything from this t class at our runtime also so suppose i am printing the name of this class so i can directly call this function my generic type and i can here pass string colon colon class java and i can also pass here int colon colon class also any other type so these thing will get printed so i am calling these three things and uh, they will be first inline and uh, then the then the class name of uh, these three classes will get printed and if i am checking the byte code of uh, this then you will see that this thing will get inline so directly this print function will get printed with this value so you can directly see here first first time getting the string class name then integer class name and then boolean class name so this thing is very simple with this generic type you can use this reified keyword so with this we can say we just came to a conclusion that is this for this inline keyword that inline the function body at call side that i just explained you at the very beginning so this is very simple no inline is also very simple that simply says do not inline the specific higher ordered function and treat it as a normal higher ordered function cross inline is a little complex and uh, that is used to inline the function but that will be also used to call our function from different context and reified is also very simple it with using reified we can just treat abstract type as concrete type like we are using here t so that is abstract but if we are using a reified t so so then this t will be a specific class type that is inline from our call site so these are the summary of our four keywords and uh, if you see this special cases so inline and cross inline function are getting inlined in bytecode and that also means if any function is getting inlined at call side so that function cannot be referenced as a variable like we were writing here well x equal to own valid success so that thing will be not possible for no inline the function will be not inlined and uh, hence hence can be referenced as a variable and can be also passed to other no inline functions 
next is if there is any inline higher order function so that can have no local returns and uh, that also mean if there is not inline function like cross inline and no inline so they cannot have no local scope instead of scopes we should write here context cross inline and no inline can cross through different contexts like here if i show you this example so cross inlining this function is not giving us here compilation error and for no inline also but if it is simply inline then this will give us a compilation error so i hope these things are clear to you and i explained these four keywords to you if yes then make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and access the android interview playlist from the description